We've talked a lot about the performance appraisal. So keep this in mind that, again, at the beginning, you need to set your learning objectives and tee that up with your supervisor how you get feedback. If they don't have a formal process, we have some forms in our office as part of our internship certification that we'd be happy to share with you to engage in that dialogue with the supervisors. Because these performance evaluation guys, your managers can use that to help evaluate you for full-time opportunities as well as your internship is an opportunity for skill development and professional development. So you want to make sure that the skills you obtain during your internship are transferable to your future employment settings. But how do you know some feedback and how you perform if you don't ask for it? So very, very important. Finalize your responsibilities. This is self-explanatory. Don't just walk out of the office on your last day and not tie up those loose ends. Make sure you're transitioning your project, handing over your project, making sure that that intern that's replacing you is set up for success because that really makes um, a good reflection on you and a good reflection on your TCU peers here at the school. Say thank you. Thank them for the internship opportunity. Um, sometimes when you're ready to move on to your next thing, this might be something that you forget to do. But it takes time and energy for our employers to host an intern. Um, we really appreciate our panel being here tonight on their free time, talking about the importance of internships. So we really thank your employer for the opportunity. Also at that time, ask for references. This is a great time when the contacts that you have made in that environment are fresh. So ask them for a personal reference or ask them if, if you could use, um, use their name uh, as a referral for future opportunities, maybe for fellow students or people that you know could, could be a star intern. So ask for those references. And the last point is to ask for a full-time job. So again, express your interest. Make sure that they know that you would like to be employed. Um, maybe if they don't have an opportunity in the role that you were interning in, maybe look at their workplace. Look how your skills that you possess might add some value and kind of create your job. You can just express that interest to them to ask. Because again, as everybody's repeatedly said, 70% of the employers today hire interns for full-time employees. 70%, that's a huge number. Again, we've, we've again talked about the importance of internships and how many employers actually hire their full-time employment from their internship pool. So very, very important. Panel, I'm gonna turn it over to you guys so we can ask the questions. One of the questions was, um, do you have any recommendations from your perspective as to how students can turn these internship opportunities into full-time employment? I think it's as important when she start early on the internships. If I've got 10, uh, 10 interns who are graduating in December and somebody came to me in September, in my mind, and said, I'm interested in staying here full time, then they're up here. If someone comes in on December 12th and says, I'm interested in staying full time, I'm like, well, where have you been? You know, I mean, I should know that you're graduating, but maybe I didn't. So start that process early and <laughs> talk to your manager and say, it's all hiring. Um, and then move it up and then go to HR and ask them. So start that process early also. I would say also to add on to that, um, for me, something that really helped in my transition over was, um, you know, take them to coffee, take your supervisor to coffee or sit down with them, make an actual meeting of it um, and say, you know, it's almost like another interview saying, hey, this is why I think I'd be great um, going full time with your company. This is why I love your company. This is what I've learned. You know, really go through, if you feel strongly that you'd be a great full-time employee for them, tell them, tell them why and why you should be hireable as a full-time employee. A lot of my backgrounds with nonprofits, you would think nonprofits have no money. They do have money, okay? We do have paid positions. Uh, many times you make yourself almost that person that they cannot live without. You do such a great job that they come to you saying, I know you have to go back to school, you know, in the spring or whatever, in the, in the fall, but would you mind staying on a little later? We have extra money to pay you. So if you're a really good employee, even a nonprofit will go out there and find money to keep you on. So be indispensable. Um, do such a great job. They're coming to you kind of saying, what can you do? You're working on a certain project. They cannot see the project going forward without you there doing it. So do such a great job to kind of start thinking about what can I do, what grant can I write to keep you on as an employee here? I can't give a better answer than that. I mean, uh, really, if, if they brought you on for an internship, I know for us, um, you know, we brought you on with the intentions that if you do well and you graduate, we'll hire you full time. So really the ball's in your court. If you want to come in there and treat it like a full time position, and when you're there, be there, work extremely hard, 
come early, stay late, um, think outside the box, try to be a game changer, try to create, uh, try to make things better. Um, there's really no reason why we wouldn't bring you on. And you know, like like the like the panel said, you know, let them know that's what you're looking for. And uh, I, you know, it just goes for anything in life. You let people know what you're looking for, and you'll you'll find it.